Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Haswell, Intel Haswell 1150 socket 4670K. K is obviously the overclock inside of it, but this is the i5 variant. The uh, i7 is the 4770K. Now we are, uh, just to kind of make things a little bit confusing, um, well I'll say what you need to do is go and click on the main review on the Overclock 3D website, wherever I end up putting it. So make sure you go and have a look at the Overclock 3D website because there you can see it, uh, all of our results in the graph so you can compare it to uh, CPUs like the 4770K, uh, which we literally, we've, we've only just tested because what we did is we've just done the review on the Gigabyte uh, UD4H. Uh, and we tested it with our, you know, our stock CPU, which is the 4770K. So then what I did is I instantly, when I finished that review, I dropped the i5 4670K in this. So we had results that were literally done just a handful of days apart. So we tested it on that and we may end, even end up using this in the not too distant future for the other stuff that we've got planned as well. You may wonder why that's in my hand now, but I've had to take that out of the rig and because uh, it was in the 900D and the 900D has now got the 2011 rig back in it and it's in the middle of testing something else. And it's just been so much has happened over the last few weeks that I've, I haven't actually got round to doing the video properly yet. Um, and uh, the, 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 the written, uh, the video, uh, all the tests and everything was done, but I've only just got the written uh, side of things done. And I always do the, uh, the video segment right at the very end. Like, I'll probably put this video up for you tomorrow. But anyway, so what we will do, this is kind of going to be like an elongated conclusion. If you want to go and have a look at uh, anything specific like CPU Z shots and the benchmark scores and things in the graphs and everything make sure you go and click and have a look at the main review and it is actually worth going and having a look because some of the stuff is so close you won't believe me unless you go and see the numbers in the graphs um, and recently I've kind of the more I started just reading out this scored this x on you know it's it's even started to bore me so if it's boring me you guys have got to be going brain dead so we'll try this and we'll see how it kind of goes down um, so uh, 4670K is pretty much the 4770K without hyperthreading. Hyperthreading is just a way for your CPU to kind of be tricked into seeing an extra core. It's not there, but it just your your rig will you know treat it as if there's an other core there for it to go and chuck stuff at. So this is basically just a normal four core uh, CPU. The K means you can overclock it. You've got um, the multipliers that you can unlock and stuff like that. But before we go any further, I'm gonna say that we gave it the uh, OC3 Gold Award, which is almost kind of a no-brainer, and you, you, you will see in a minute why. But we also gave it the Gamer's Choice Award, and that's the kind of point that I am gonna be trying to make in this video. I seem to be doing a lot of karate chopping today. Hotcha, hotcha, hotcha. Don't know why, maybe I should get my hands. Um, anyway, so, uh, overclocking-wise, we will start there. Uh, overclocking wise, it pretty much, it was Haswell all over again. You do kind of, you do need to keep the volts down. You do get to a point with the, uh, the voltages where things just go and you kind of, you get to a, I need to stress that all your CPUs are going to be different. With all of the Haswell CPUs that I've had come through, every single one of them has been different. And by that, I mean, I've had uh, the i7, I've got one here that does 4.2 gigahertz and won't go any further. I've got another one that does just about 4.4 gigahertz and won't go any further. And then I've got another one that does 4.9 gigahertz, less volts than all of them. So it's, it's you, you, if you want to follow our overclocking guide, you do need to start at the bottom with these and slowly work your way up because you, you will get to a point where Say for argument's sake, you'll get to 4.4 gigahertz at a decent amount of volts, and then it takes an enormous step to get it to go any further. With the uh, 4670K that I've got here, I got 4.8 out of it, which does seem to be a remarkable chip, and that was 4.8 at 1.3 volts. Uh, it would not go further stable for love nor money. Um, I do know that most retailers, though, are putting these out with a, a overclock wise either 4.2 or 4.4 gigahertz, around the 1.2 to 1.25 volts. And I would say that's a good kind of target to aim for. If you can get 4.4 out of yours at 1.25 volts, I would be extremely happy. 
If you then need 1.3 volts plus to get 4.6, I really wouldn't bother. So just, you do need to kind of keep things conservative because even though it looks like those clocks uh, are lower than the previous generation, they're still going to be kind of putting out the same kind of uh, scores because the architecture is that little bit better. Uh, memory wise, uh, 2400 megahertz straight in, literally didn't have to bother even changing anything with it. 2600, 2666 was also just an XMP click. The memory control on the i5, especially this one that we've got, was still very strong. Um, with memory prices, it's looking like they're going to go up again. Uh, and the faster uh, IMC, or the faster chips that go on the memory anyway, be be becoming increasingly difficult to get hold of. I mean, the 2666 kiss, kits cost an absolute fortune again at the moment. So the fact that it can do 2400 with absolutely no, you know, quibbles will go straight in. Uh, I would say, you know, for the most part, most people aren't going to want to go beyond that 2400 mark anyway, because there's such a big price difference to be able to go that little bit quicker. Um, and with most gamers anyway, I would say 2133, 2400, that would be like screaming. You, you just, yeah. It's, it will do you more than you want to do. So the CPU is more than capable for really quick RAM speeds. Um, so we've got uh, overclocking sorted. Um, benchmarking. It, in benchmarks, when you put it, you know, head to head with the 4770K with things like Cinebench uh, and the 3D marks, there was blatantly going to be a difference and there was a difference. Uh, but strangely, when you went to PC Mark, there wasn't a lot of difference there at all. At, at times, there, there was nothing. So with the real world stuff, there's really not a lot to kind of go between them. Now, we can kind of get to the point about that I was trying to make about the gamer's choice. Gamer's choice. And this is the wonderful thing, is the, uh, the, the 4670K has obviously got some pretty good... Um, you know, older brothers, so to speak. We've got the 3570K, 3570K, yeah, because I need to get the numbers right, because they've obviously changed them all just to throw us. Uh, and then there was the 2500K, and they were the kind of i5s of old, and the 2500K is always, and even still now, is an epic gaming chip. Um, and they always have been. But the surprising thing is, is when you put, and just to kind of chuck some numbers at you, if you put a stock 4670K head to head with a 4.9 gigahertz 4770K, so stock i5, overclocked i7. In the majority of the games, there was fuck all between them. And I mean, shockingly, nothing between them. Go and have a look at the, the main website so you can see. Now, I know, you know, we've, we kind of, we take a selection of games of ours. We don't want to do 20 million pages of, you know, this result and that result and that result. We just take a kind of a bit of a highlight and we will be chucking some more in soon. But with the stuff we've done, you can see that there's not a lot there. And that's because games nowadays, they do still need a CPU. That's, that, you know, we're not going to quibble about that. Uh, a game will use the CPU to process some of the points. It's not all graphics based. But it's not a lot. It's not like the old days where the CPU was relied on to do a, a, a lot of other stuff and things just didn't you know, work and talk as well together. And the point that we've been trying to make for quite a while is when you're building a gaming rig, and I mean specifically if you are just a gamer, then the most important thing that you need to put in your rig is your graphics card. If it becomes a choice between getting a 760 and a 780, uh, and you know, if you have the 760, you're going to get a 4770K, or if you have the 780, you're going to get the 4670K, we'll tell you to get the better graphics card and the lower CPU. You do have to kind of balance it within, you know, you know certain amounts, but generally the graphics is where you want to be spending your money. You blatantly don't want to be putting a 500 pound graphics card with a 50 quid CPU, 25 quid RAM and a motherboard that you found in a skip. You do kind of need to balance things out, but within reason, the graphics is where you want to be spending the majority of your money. Um, if you're going to be using it for, like I said, just gaming, that's the way it swings. When you start talking about benchmarking or um, uh, heavy rendering, heavy photoshopping, that type of thing, 
then yes, you may need some more CPU grunt. But for those gamers of you out there, that's where that's the way I would swing it. If you do a lot of kind of surfing, general kind of use, the other thing that you want to spend your money on is a solid state drive because solid state drives keeps your rig, you know, just super, super snappy. And you don't want to be, you know, waiting for a hard drive to spin up and all that kind of stuff. But that's really where you want to be spending stuff. But like I said, it was quite surprising, even for us, to kind of go stock i5, overclocked i7, and then like there was next to nothing between the two. So it kind of gets to the point where we would say, you know, if you're build, you want to build yourself an epic, epic single graphics card gaming rig, at this moment in time, because obviously we may have graphics cards coming out in the not too distant future, but an i5 4670K, maybe with a little bit of a mo modest overclock, decent cooler so that you can keep the fan speed down so it's all nice and quiet a 780 maybe 120 or a 240 gigabyte solid state drive depending on your budget and a reasonable board and what reason why we say reasonable is like the ud4h is under 150 quid now so a reasonable board and you're going to be getting some of the scores that we are and if if someone was to spend more money and then go same rig bigger solid state drive chuck a 4770k in it you're still going to be getting the same frames per second as, as he will. So it's just kind of wise choices with these rigs nowadays will make a bigger impact. And just chucking money at a problem isn't necessarily going to, you know, make their rig any better than yours or more specifically yours any worse. So, you know, I'm a gamer. This is what I want. You've got your mate saying, oh, no, no, no. You should have got yourself the i7. You should have done this. You should have done that. Actually, Maybe you shouldn't have done. Maybe you have just spent your money wisely. Um, so, how long have we been chit-chatting for? Still, it's not going to be one of my most long, you know, mental videos in the world because we've not had to do loads of ins and outs and uh, like screenshots and stuff because you can use the the main review to kind of refer back to. But the the end of the day, the the, the thing, the one thing that I can can't stress enough of is the fact that even though this is the baby brother, depending on what you want to use it for, it could be as good as the i7. Uh, power draw, it was pulling about 50 watts less than we were expecting from the previous one. 50 watts, I'm sure it was 50 watts. No, yeah, it was 50 watts, sorry. Um, uh, and it was 6 to 12 degrees cooler at, at 4.8 gigahertz were with the same hyper-threaded, you know, like the 4770K, so between 6 and 12 degrees, depending on the load that we were putting on it, than the, the i7 as well. Um, now, we do stress our CPUs to within an inch of their life. But one thing I will say with the Haswell is when you do start to overclock them, you do need a good cooler. And by that, I mean if you don't get a good cooler, it will make you deaf to keep it cool. You can tame them pretty well with like, you know, one of the hydro coolers or an HD14 or something like that. Um, but you need that big, you know, something with some serious cooling kahunas or balls or dang dog stanglies, whatever you want to call it, just so that you can keep the, the noise down as well. So do consider that in, in your budgets. If you're just going to be running it at stock, then another thing that I would say is quite surprisingly with these CPUs, they do respond quite well to uh, being um, undervolted. Uh, I would say if, you, if you're going to undervolt it, you do need to go back in stages quite carefully to make sure you find a stable point because you don't want to start getting blue screens and stuff. But by knocking those volts back, because auto doesn't mean it's running at stock, boys and girls. Auto means your board will do what it wants with it. So what you need to do is manually set your V-core, and then if you want to overclock, you obviously go up from that point, but if you want to undervolt and keep it at stock, you can knock those volts back. So I, I, I say it in every CPU and motherboard video, auto isn't stock. I've seen boards or systems before at shows and on the forums where someone's saying, oh, I've got 4.8 gigahertz at stock volts, and you're like, what have you set the volts to in BIOS then? And they go, well, no, I haven't. I didn't need to. It's at stock. It's at auto. And then you're like, you look at CPU-Z and they've got a 3770K running at 1.56 volts because the motherboard's just gone, woohoo, yeah, we'll ramp that up. And it doesn't work like that. So you have to make sure that you, you set it yourself so that your motherboard can't just get all volt happy and start, you know, going nuts on it for you. 
Um, some of the uh, the smaller volts on the boards you don't necessarily need to worry about too much because they don't need a lot of volts and the bores won't go too daft. It's just the main ones. Look at the overclocking guide that I did. Look for 1155 overclocking guide. Uh, pretty much everything is going to uh, relate into this or at least you know following the basics with the V-Core. And then if you need any more assistance, just go onto the OC3D forums and ask there. But if you follow that guide, that will get you to the limits of your chip just so easily and you won't have to worry about it's only when you start going into the really kind of nitty gritty side of things uh, that you may need a little bit more help but that video was just made to you know cover the basics and help you get the on the the overclocking ladder and uh, learn the basics so you can learn your system i may make another one in the not too distant future but it will depend on workload and my own sanity um, so the long and short of it was, if you have a look at the uh, the review on Overclock 3D, like I said, Gold Award, Gamer's Choice Award. If you're just a gamer, I can't stress enough that you don't need any more than the 4670K. Uh, it's only when you start thinking about photo editing, and I'm talking about stupid multi-layer photo editing, music production where you've got lots and lots and lots of samples, video editing, you know, proper hardcore use that you kind of need to make that step upwards. But if you're if you're looking hardcore use, sometimes you're even better on jumping on the 2011 socket. It really depends whether, you know, how hardcore you need to go. And once you get up to the 2011 hardcore users, they're probably not going to be gamers anyway. So it's just, you know, wh whether you want, you know, you know, I said that a lot tonight, but it's finding that balance. If all you want to do is turn your rig on, look at Facebook, look at, um, you know, around the Tinternet, eBay, that kind of stuff, and then meet up with your mates on a Saturday night and spend 48 hours playing games right the way through till Monday morning, and all you're going to be doing then is playing games, then the 4670K is going to do you proud. Um, so, yes, I've rambled enough. It is really late, and I mean really late. It's 25 to 10 and I'm going crackers, and it's, yeah, I just need to go. So, yee! This is Tiny Tom Logan with the Intel 4670K i5 Haswell CPU that's won the Gold Award and the Gamer's Choice Award, and for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. <laughs> Where did that come from? Out. Ding! <laughs>